up you guys? You already know what it is. It's time for another Buffy video. But today, I thought I'd do something a little bit different and not just look at Buffy the TV show, which I will be continuing um, at later videos, but I thought it'll be interesting just to mix up a little bit and look at Buffy the movie um, alongside Buffy the TV series and look at the differences um, between both of the projects um, and also obviously talk about um, what makes both of them good in their own ways um, because I do like the movie obviously it's not the same as the TV program and it's nowhere near as great as the TV program but it still is a good watch and it's still fun and enjoyable and without the movie we wouldn't have the TV show so I thought I would at least pay a little bit of respect to the movie and what started obviously the Buffy universe Let's just get straight into the differences um, between Buffy the Vampire Slayer the movie and also the TV show. So Buffy the Vampire Slayer the movie was actually released in 1992. Sorry, my dog's here, just being weird. Um, and obviously that was created also by Joss Whedon, who we know created the show. Um, and that is really what catapulted the universe of Buffy, although very different to the TV show. It was much more lighter, more comedic. It didn't take itself too seriously, whereas obviously the TV show is a bit more darker. We get to flesh out the characters a little bit more and we get introduced to Buffy's backstory a little bit more. Um, but the TV show is really what started it all. For Buffy the Vampire Slayer slash her way to our TV screens, she was on the big screen in the movie dating Luke Perry. Yes, you have quite a good um, and well-known cast in the movie. You have Luke Perry, Christy Swanson, um, who else? Hilary Swank is in it. You get a little cameo from Ben Affleck, who's like a basketball player. Um, who else? David Arquette. You really do have quite a well-known and up-and-coming cast um, of young actors back then. So, if anything, you have that to look forward to. I mean, Luke Perry was obviously 90210 at the time, so that was huge. Um, and yeah, and obviously we know that Christine Swanson played Buffy in the movie, and then we've got Sarah Michelle Gellar, who played Buffy in the TV series. And it's, a, although, I don't know if I watched the movie before I watched the TV show, this was a long time ago, but I just can't now picture anyone else in Buffy's role other than Sarah Michelle Gellar. Um, but if we try and separate the two, and you know take it for what it is and it's obviously still enjoyable to watch Christy Swanson as Buffy. So fortunately um, for some of us Joss Whedon got another chance at doing Buffy the Vampire Slayer so when he did Buffy the movie um, obviously that came out but it wasn't quite what he wanted and it wasn't quite how he wanted Buffy to be. Chosen to go to the graveyard why don't you just take the first runner up, okay? It's a bit more light-hearted, I guess, than what he wanted. Although the show still has a lot of comedy and witty comments and lines, um, it has much, much more of a darker tone to it. And I think that's what Joss Whedon initially wanted, but the studio didn't want that. They wanted a sort of light-hearted, fun movie. Um, so when he got another chance to do it, he obviously created what we know as Buffy the TV series. So when Buffy reappeared on our television, on our television screens, um, we got much more of a different feel and a different look at the universe and obviously where Buffy um, lives, her friends, who she's dating, all completely changed, although it took elements from the movie. So as we know, in the TV show, the um, setting is the fictional place of Sunnydale, where Buffy has moved to from LA. But in the movie, obviously, we know that it's all set in Los Angeles. So you get this really quite like valley girl type of feel um, to Christy Swanson's Buffy, as opposed to the Buffy we get in the show. Um, although, obviously, she is from LA, um, having that small town, small town feel um, helps to sort of 
um, separate Sunnydale from the rest of the world and you get to play around more with the the place and the location because it's not a real place um, whereas obviously LA is and it's a little bit more difficult to try and tell stories based there and change things when um, when you're dealing with real locations as opposed to fictional locations and obviously as I mentioned with the characters you know in the movie you've got Luke Perry who, who plays Pike and I don't know maybe maybe it is I don't know if um, when they did the TV show they took not necessarily the character of Pike but the name Pike and just created Spike out of it like I don't know I've just literally never thought about that until now who knows maybe that was sort of influence or a little nod um, to the movie by calling Spike Spike and then obviously Pike um, in the movie Pike plays um, Buffy's love interest in the movie and he sort of helps her along the way he's not a vampire but he plays their love interest um, and in the TV show we know that Buffy's main love interest um, her main boo um, from the beginning of the show is Angel um, who is a vampire but he is a vampire with a soul and I go into more about Angel in my other Buffy videos and you can watch all that there so I won't go into much about the show um, today because I will be doing that in other videos um, but he is basically who Buffy falls in love with and he basically helps her the same way Pike helps Buffy in the movie um, but unlike the movie where we got Christy Swanson and her group of sort of valley girl friends who literally just turn on at any chance they get they're not very they're not fleshed out characters um, they're not very I guess a close-knit type of friend group and they don't know she's a vampire slayer whereas in the TV show we you know we got the Scooby gang um, we've got Willow, Xander um, and then later on you get you know people sort of help help them along the way like Cordelia a little bit more different the way it is obviously with the TV show you can explore the characters backstory is a little bit more you can introduce characters a little bit more and really look at their relationships and build those relationships whereas in a movie you can't um, but it just seems that in the TV show Buffy had a close group of friends that were obviously going to help her whereas in, t in the movie um, it just didn't seem that way and they just sort of turned on her and then if we're going to look at the Watcher um, in Buffy the movie we got Merrick who is um, Buffy's watcher and he's played by Donald, Donald uh, why can't I talk today <laughs> Donald Sutherland um, who is Keith Sutherland's dad um, so he plays the watcher and he plays a really good watcher he's believable but for me nothing can replace Giles from the TV show as we know Giles is Buffy's watcher um, and the difference is for me obviously like I said with the other characters you get to flesh out the character a little bit more you get to build on that relationship and in the tv show we really see that father daughter relationship between Buffy and Giles I mean you, you kind of touch upon that a little bit in the movie but not as much as in the tv show and you really see their chemistry I think it's the chemistry most of all that um that Sarah Michelle Gellar has um so I, with, with obviously her watcher um, and you don't get that necessarily in the movie um, and I think that's also what plays an important important part um, of the watcher and slayer kind of bond that we didn't really get to explore in the movie so I'm not going to hate on the movie because I do like the movie but the movie is really a testament to how good ideas if dealt with by the wrong people can come out bad um so i'm not saying obviously the movie is bad but compared to the tv show it it pretty much is um obviously it's the same idea you know the slayer has a watcher she obviously fights vampires she learns she's a slayer she's the chosen one um but the way it's executed the people behind it obviously joss whedon was behind it but he didn't really agree with what the studio wanted um, for the look and feel of Buffy um, so that really sort of ruined what Buffy could have been as a movie as well um, obviously we know it's more light-hearted comedic um, even even just the way the vampires look just they're not nothing nothing special about them um, they just look normal with fangs um, they don't look scary or believable as 
as you do in Buffy, like some of the vampires in Buffy, the prosthetics, um, some of the demons that we get to see, um, the gentlemen that I mentioned freaked me the crap out in one of my other videos, um, just really took Buffy to another level, which the movie lacked. Um, and obviously her group of friends and stuff, and um, you didn't really see character development in the movie, and I think it was the studio's fault. They sort of went with it in a different direction. They had stuck to obviously jo Joss Whedon's vision. I think the movie could have been almost as good as Buffy the TV show. So if we look at it as in, obviously with Buffy the TV show, it ran for seven seasons. Um, so obviously you had a lot of episodes. You had a lot of time to explore different things, continue storylines. Um, obviously with each season you had a big bad that Buffy had to go up against um, whereas obviously Buffy the movie you only had what an hour and something 90 minutes to explore these characters and storylines um, but the difference is with a TV show if you have one bad episode which a lot of TV shows do it's not necessarily that they're bad episodes but they're probably not as exciting or much going on and they're sort of I guess placeholder episodes um, if you do have one bad episode, then you can redeem yourself by another episode um, or by another season and then you sort of win your audience back and you don't really lose them by just, you know, having a bad episode. Whereas in a movie, if you don't capture your audience, if you don't grab their attention, if you don't get them hooked in um, throughout that movie, they're not going to come back, they're not going to enjoy it and obviously you're not going to get a sequel. Um, but also the beginning of a movie is very important and if you don't capture your audience in that beginning part then it's not going to do well and I think that's what Buffy did. Obviously we started in a gym where they're doing like some sort of cheerleading routine and even from, from that you see it's going to be a very, I don't know, silly, light-hearted, um, shallow kind of movie and Buffy seems shallow and I think that's what it is. With the two different characters, Buffy really grows as a character in the TV show. We see her coming in as sort of like this shallow, popular girl from LA. That's why she starts first hanging out with Cordelia. But then we realize she's not like that. She's got more depth to her. And then uh, she gra gravitates more towards Willow and Xander. Um, and you really start liking Buffy as a character. Whereas in the movie, um, you don't really get a chance to see that. So you don't really build this sort of relationship with Buffy um, and I think that's what would typically draw an audience in uh, which obviously the movie couldn't do. But I really want to look at the differences between Pike and Angel because as I mentioned Pike is um, Buffy's love interest in the movie and Angel is Buffy's love interest in the show um, and I think what really pr probably drawed audiences in to Buffy the movie was Luke Perry um, because he was a huge star at the time, you know, 90210, he was still doing that, so he was a huge star. But his character was nowhere near as captivating or interesting as Angel was, uh, because obviously Angel was a vampire who had a soul, and we're like, okay, where is this going? Like, how did he, how did he get his soul? Um, how does he have a soul? Obviously, if you're a vampire, you're dead, so you shouldn't have a soul. So we get to really explore that, and we get to build up to the relationship and the tension that Buffy and Angel have. And I think that's what works, is that tension of, will they get together? Do they like each other? Obviously, we know they do like each other, but it's, will they get together? Whereas, obviously, in Buffy the movie, it's just two regular kids that end up getting together. Um, and it's kind of like a shallow relationship which obviously is okay to watch I guess but it's nowhere near as creative or fun as Buffy and Angel. But I think if Pike had appeared um, in Buffy the TV show I think Buffy's love life would have turned boring pretty quickly because there's not much more you can explore there. Um, but obviously with Angel it's this like mysterious type of character who you want to know more about Angel as well as Angel and Buffy um, and their sort of on again off again kind of relationship and then when Angel turns bad you just really you really feel for Buffy and you root for Buffy and you obviously want him to get his soul back so he's a character that you really are invested in just as much as Buffy and the other characters. 
Angel was intriguing enough to keep audiences hooked. Um, not just with his storyline, but obviously the storyline between him and Buffy. And as we know, there was a spin-off Angel. So, you know, he must have been a good character for them to be able to explore and have his own show, um, which he was. And with his character, we really saw the world of vampires expand and who they could be. Um, because at this point, we just thought vampires were these evil creatures that were dead which they are um but with angel he really showed us that there's more to vampires and there can be good vampires um and vampires with a soul and you know they could fall in love and do all that kind of stuff um which i think really worked in the tv show but now if we explore um merrick and giles a little bit more um it's no secret that donald sutherland's portrayal of merrick and the watcher um, was not or did not sit well with Joss Whedon and he didn't obviously like his portrayal um, of who the watcher was supposed to be and it's no secret he said it before um, but I think Donald Sutherland did a good job but obviously I think if you compare him now to the Giles that we know then obviously yeah I can see sort of where he's coming from a little so with Merrick he is pretty much a humorless man um, who doesn't really fit in with the tone of how, you know, comedic Buffy the movie um, was. Um, so it kind of feels a bit off at times. Um, whereas with the show, there is comedy in it and Giles is, has humour, as we know. Um, but the show isn't just based on humour. So even when Giles is uptight and um, very, like... It doesn't sort of seem as obvious as with the movie. And although, as I mentioned, Merrick and Buffy do have this father and daughter kind of relationship, it's explored more in the TV show because we've got a chance to explore it more. And I think the relationship between the two characters and two actors actually worked really well and we got to really develop that father-daughter bond. And instead of like in the movie where Merrick dies for Buffy in the TV show he really wants her to learn and be the best slayer that she can be and he um I wouldn't say makes but he really encourages her to fight her own battles he's obviously there all the time for her if she needs it but he really you know trains her and encourages her that she needs to fight her own battles because she is a chosen one she's a slayer so he's really there sort of guiding and pushing her to to be stronger and you know to think for herself and in case obviously one day he's not there then she's going to be alone and what is she going to do if he's sort of fighting her battles for her um which is kind of like parents in real life which is why it you know relates to the father figure because you know they'll help you out as much as they can but it's up to you to make the decisions and to experience things for yourself and that is really what makes a tv show Giles so much better than Merrick in the movie and I think if Giles took the same sort of lead as Merrick and he you know died early um, in the show as Merrick did in the film then we you know the the journey that Buffy goes through from sort of shallow cheerleader to basically the hero of the world um, wouldn't be as exciting as it was um, because Giles is pretty much um, there behind the scenes um, helping Buffy along the way and without him we wouldn't I guess know as much information um, and explore these you know vampires demons as much as we did um, if Giles wasn't more of a major part in the TV show and if we're looking at the first season of Buffy compared to the movie um, obviously in Buffy the TV show we've got the first big bad which is the master who we meet in episode one um, and I've explored that in my other two videos so you can watch that after this video um, but in the movie we have Lothos who is um, the big bad in the movie but much more comedic much more silly um, so you almost don't feel as scared for Buffy or the characters as you do for uh, Buffy in the TV show because he's more comedic and almost just I don't know it's just a silly character he doesn't look scary either um, but obviously that's 
her big bad that she has to fight at the end of the movie and obviously she's going to be scared and training um, to fight him. Unfortunately, uh, Lothos was pretty terrible big bad or, you know, evil character um, from the... Why did they... Why would they dress him that way? Like, his clothes were comedic, his tone was comedic, there's nothing scary or terrifying about him and it almost made you think that Buffy could just defeat him, like, literally like that. Why would they make such a character like that? Whereas in the TV show, he looked like a vampire. The prosthetics, his minions, his lair, his... Just the way he manipulated Buffy throughout, you know, the season, trying to get in her head. That is what we want to see when it comes to a big bad. Not what we got with Lothos in the movie. You know, the master is so much more intimidating um, and literally could just destroy Lothos in a minute if he if he wanted to um, and obviously I know it's a movie we didn't really get to explore his backstory or or who he is and how terrifying he is but I think even if they got a chance to do that there wouldn't be much to that character um, other than what we got and if you look at the end I, th I don't know if it's after the credits or just before the credits he's literally there just dying um, but it's so comedic, he's like, uh, uh, uh and it's just like, oh, <laughs> why, why, why would they make this character that's supposed to be evil and scary such a comedic character? I don't know why. I'm glad we got the master, um, and I'm glad the whole tone of Buffy changed for the series. Now that we've explored, obviously, the setting, as we know, Buffy the movie was set in LA, Buffy the TV show was set in Sunnydale, we've explored the characters, the Scooby gang compared to the sort of mean girl, Valley girls um, and Giles, Merrick and also Pike and Angel um, and the two Buffies of course. Now we can look at the final fight, the final showdown. Um, obviously we get in episode one of Buffy and obviously end of the season between her and the master and then in the movie. So the final fight is very different. The movie version is just very silly. Um, it's just unbelievable, silly, comedic, um, just not scary at all and you don't really care if you're rooting for Buffy at this point um, because just the way they're fighting, the choreography, the way it's all done is just, it's just silly and I think they could have done much better with that. And there's just no real tension or lead up um, with the fight or to the fight um, as there is in the TV show. It's literally like, okay, I'm going to fight you now, here's, here's the fight and that's it. Um, and the way Buffy defeats the big bad is basically by using hairspray. I'm not going to explain what exactly happens. You know, you should go watch it for yourself, find a clip on YouTube, watch the movie, I don't know. But she uses hairspray and it's just another comedic way of her defeating him, which is just so stupid. I mean, I don't know if you want to see it as clever because she's a teenage girl and she's using what she has around her and like you know what she would use on a daily basis you know what she would have in her purse hairspray but it's just uh, I don't know just didn't really sit well with me and just wasn't as entertaining I love when you know in the TV show there's this tension that builds up for the end of the fight um to get to the end of the fight um obviously Buffy training and all this tension um you know leading up to it and then by the time you get to the fight the way it's all fleshed out, all the characters helping, all the characters fighting, um, the choreography is just, is just incredible. And you really root for Buffy and, you know, when she's getting thrown about or her, you're just, you're literally, you feel it for her. Whereas in the film, you just, you just didn't. And that's what really sucked about it. So with the show, um, the master can actually hypnotize people and take control of people and he does it to Buffy, um, which is terrifying. And he actually uses it to kill Buffy, spoiler alert, to kill Buffy um, at the end of the season. Obviously, we know Buffy comes back because there's seven more seasons, but it's terrifying to think that even against someone like Buffy, he can take control over her like that. Whereas in the movie, he really didn't have any power or control over, over the Slayer whatsoever. And obviously, in the TV show, we know that at the end, um, with the help of the Scooby gang, that Buffy defeats um, the master um well temporarily at the end of episode one um and defeats luke and all those minions by tricking them into thinking that the sunrise was coming up obviously vampires can't go out in the daylight um and she tricks them and gets to obviously 
you know, stab them or whatever. Um, and obviously that's how she defeats them. But obviously at the end of the season, um, we have this really continuation of is Buffy really alive? And then obviously we see her come back and train again to grow stronger and to be able to defeat the master um, once and for all. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the TV show, took risks that no other TV show did at the time and obviously that the movie didn't at the time as well. Um, and it really explored the female character as a heroine um, and as the badass girl that we know, which you didn't really get in the movies. Um, and Sarah Michelle Gellar really brings a vulnerability to the character, a likability um, that unfortunately Christy Swanson didn't bring to Buffy the movie, but I don't think it's her fault. I just think it's the way Buffy was created at that time. Um, she was supposed to be shallow and this valley girl, um, which now I see why Joss Whedon wanted to go in a different direction with the TV show. And as we know, Buffy's first defeat at the hands of the master was it intense, it was captivating. You were literally sitting at the edge of your sofa like, come on Buffy, you can do it. Really rooting for her. Um, and that's what makes their showdown more triumphant and her you know, eventually defeating the ma master more epic and more like, yes, you know, we knew you could do it. We've been here um, with you, supporting you, you know, training with you, learning all this information with you. So when she actually does defeat the master, it's, you know, it's that kind of moment at the end of movies or TV shows that, you know, that you get uh, where everyone's cheering for the lead character. And I just did not feel that way with the movie. Like, yes, I was like, oh, yay, she did it. Um, and I kind of thought she would do it, um, just given how Merrick was as a um, big bad. But it was nothing, it was nothing special about it. It was nothing um interesting about it it was more so yes you know she did it her training paid off she's now you know the slayer um but there was nothing more to it than that and i'm not going to be completely negative against um lothos or buffy the vampire say the movie but his sort of backstory of killing um all these vampire slayers before um, was really then taken to the TV show and used as Spike's backstory and we really got to explore why he was this, you know, great vampire who who all these vampire slayers were actually scared of. Um, and I'm glad we got to see that in a different character through Spike and actually explored that a little bit more um, because Spike makes it believable that he is scary and he's this type of character that no slayer you know could sort of go up against easily whereas with lothos it was more like really you really killed that many vampire slayers like how i just don't take you seriously <laughs> um and comment if you agree with me if you feel the same way with him so that is it for this video guys those are my reasons f or differences of Buffy the Vampire Slayer the movie um, compared to Buffy the Vampire Slayer the TV show. Um, although there's similar elements, obviously the story, some of the characters, etc. Um, and the comedic tone that we get to see that Joss Whedon brings to both um, is still there. Um, the show is just so much better. So if you haven't watched the show, please watch it. Um, you really get to see who the Slayer is past slayers um the watcher the scooby gang you know you really get to explore the world of buffy and vampires that you don't get to explore in the movie um i'm not saying that the movie is completely crap um you know it's a fun watch and i do love watching it just to have something you know light-hearted in the background just funny to watch um when i don't want to watch something sort of more dark but i would probably advise you if you are going to watch a movie um, and you haven't yet probably watched all of Buffy um, watch it for what it is and don't take it too seriously and se separate the two projects from each other just pretend they're not the same at all they have no similarities in characters you know the plot isn't similar just separate the two as if they're just two completely different 
um, things and you will enjoy the film a little bit more I think um, but when you obviously watch the film and the TV show you're kind of comparing the two a bit too much and you're like ah the, the film doesn't do it for me um, but yeah thank you again for watching this video my next video will obviously be continuing with Buffy the Vampire Slayer the TV show um, so stay tuned for that and thank you to all the new subscribers I'm glad you're enjoying my videos and I look forward to doing more um, and catching up with anyone in the comments if you do comment below so thanks again and stay safe mm -hmm.